Okay, guys, I'm here today with Heath Pedigo. Huge honor for me, CJ, Luke. And the, guys, Heath this week is shooting an entire structure, actually four instructions, all about his blue belt curriculum. So he's doing, he's doing blue belt stripe one, blue belt stripe two, blue belt stripe, stripe three, and blue belt stripe four. Exactly as he did with the white belt, that was a huge success. And the, for this one, he brought it for him, Luke, who just won the words gi and no gi as a blue belt, and now his purple belt. And also CJ, and uh, today he is going to show us my here. Wife's a a champion. What's that? I said my wife's a Pan Am champion. And there you go. That's his claim to success. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so in this video here, he is going to show us how to do some scramble for the dog fight. So if someone has the half bear on you and gets the other hook, he has a very cool move that he uses, uh, and that and and that and stop on the person's side control. So make sure to check it out. And this is part of his blue belt stripe one in the curriculum. And uh, thanks for being here. Yeah, no doubt. So, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So guys, I, I, we get a lot of questions about, like I said, uh, losing the underhook and being on top. And when the guys wrestle up on you, for me, this was my worst position. As you know, when you are able to wrestle up, sometimes the people are a little bit lost. They, yep, they, yep. Just, they kind of grab a hold of the wizard or they kind of freak out or they just accept that you're going to yep. sweep them and try to get a good position for the bottom, okay? Yep. So guys, for this one, okay, CJ is going to be down and I am in the top half. CJ, uh, guys, in this position, uh, underhook is king. It's, under, it's king for me, it's king for CJ. Unfortunately, we've lost this time, so we're here and one of the main things people do is they come to a wizard, okay? I'm not huge on the wizard, and I was never able to do. I almost felt like, Bernardo, that I was just kind of holding the person until they swept me. Just slowing down the yeah, process, yeah. right? I it, got it. Yeah, it's like slow I feel the same, the same thing sometimes. So maybe one of the things was I could kind of try to uh, put his, his shoulders down, and if, if he would be lazy with his feet, that I could kind of sprawl, and maybe I could get away. Yeah. Okay? So while I was playing with the sprawl, this is kind of what happened, okay? So CJ is starting to wrestle up on me. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna pinch my own knees, okay? And CJ is gonna start to wrestle up and come to his knees, okay? So once he gets here, we'll go ahead and pull it out, guys. This position here, this is where the fight can kind of start and I'm in trouble, okay? Because CJ is gonna be sucking me and he's gonna be a lot tighter. He can knee tap me. He can roll through and do lots and lots of things, okay? So here's what we're gonna do, come back down. Guys, we're gonna pinch this and we're gonna kind of bait them. I wanna put my my arm out here really far, and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna wait for CJ to put his kneecap down on the mat and put all his weight. So slow motion here. As he puts it out, guys, I'm gonna put my head down, and I'm going to take this leg and my other leg, and we're just gonna jump to the opposite side. All my weight goes down, and I'm just jumping to the opposite side. This is probably the easiest, most effective way to shut that down, okay? And keep in mind, we were in really bad shape here. We had given up the underhook, and we were going to get swept and taken down, okay? Oh, it, it almost feels like that the secret there is to really pinch his leg down, and as soon as you take the leg out, For sure. then you do this, right? So by pinching the leg, we're almost, not, I don't want to say tricking him, yep. but we're almost baiting him to feel like he needs to wrestle up hard, yep. Yep. okay? And we're going to use our head to post on the mat, okay? So here, I'm pinching, okay? I'm pushing out or pushing into him. Here, guys, so now, once CJ starts to come up, we'll go real slow here. He's gonna wrestle up, slow motion. As it comes out, I'm now gonna let it out. And before he puts it on the ground, guys, I'm gonna put my head down and push off of my head. And I'm just going to push with my hand and hop onto the opposite side of CJ, okay? Now, guys, you can jump really high in the air, but I'm doing this the most unathletic way possible. Masters predators can do this. Uh, kids can do this, okay? Not extremely athletic guys like Luke can also do this, okay? Yeah. No, so. and I, I felt like uh, as soon as you let go the leg, there's almost like a one or two seconds time frame over there that you almost get a little mo some momentum from his... For sure. Yeah. Let me give it a shot? Yeah. All right. How's it feel to be on the other end of this? <laughs> well, so, okay, so come back again. So I really gotta pinch his leg here. Yes. And then he's gonna go, 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 go. Also, let go. That's the time, right? That's it. Man, that's awesome. It's so simple. Yeah. And so effective. It's super simple. It's one of the easiest yeah. things. And and if you delay to do that, or if you don't pinch the leg, then the position. Why the position doesn't work? I'm just questioning myself here. 
like uh because it really feels like pinching the leg is the secret there yeah i just think it's one of those things where by pinching the leg it's it's, it's one of these things so when cj's down because okay. I, I think like when you pinch the leg we force them to be in the same line as us and if you don't pinch the leg then you kind of turn right and, and yeah. so by pinching the leg too i really slow him down and yep. now i know that he has to pull this leg out so if you come around to this side randy over here when i'm here guys like i said i'm pushing into him it's almost like yep. i'm baiting him to try to roll yep. me through but my body weight's really really far over here so guys if i don't pinch the leg he can pop this up and immediately start to knee tap me yeah now this see now he's over my leg i got it i got okay. it so I now it. i can't I pop it. on so I if, if i pinch Okay, come back down. Uh, that, that's the detail. Right. Oh, yeah. If I pinch, as soon as he pulls it out, there's nothing blocking you to up. move. Oh, okay. Correct. No, that makes sense. I was trying to, I was wondering that. I saw the move working and I was like, why it's so important to yeah. pinch the leg? Okay, that makes sense. And this is one of those things where it's like, um, I don't know who made the move and I've yep. constantly seen people scramble, but sometimes you'll get little high school wrestlers in and I've watched them kind of do it and yep. they have no idea that they're doing it. Yep. So, for me, it was something, like I said, that I really struggle in that position. When someone gets half, deep half, they wrestle up on me, I usually give up the two. So good. I start thinking once you're up now is, okay, how can I get him into closed guard and be in a good position? Good. Rather than saying, well, I could just drop my head, push down, jump over, and then be back in control. Got it. You know what I mean, no. so this is a worst case scenario. And yep. not only are we uh, escaping the scenario, we're coming out with a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. No, and the, I think especially like uh, many of our customers are older people. Yeah. And the older people tend to play half guard when they are more. For sure. And the half guard that they play is exactly this one. It's yeah. like the Lucas Leach one, the dog fight one. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a big help to everybody. As I get older, the game is a little easier for me to slow down, you know, with the young guys and, you know, forcing the half on them is something yep. that I've kind of got into. The thing is, is they don't like that. So they wrestle up. Yep. So I needed to kind of find something that I could slow them down with. And this is just one of those things where there's a lot of pressure. Yep. It doesn't require a lot of athleticism. Even though we're jumping over and it looks fancy, yep. it's about as easy as a jiu-jitsu move. It, it really is. Yeah. No, and they, I would approve of that because I don't know how to do a cardio, but I could do this move. So, right. <laughs> so that, like I said, about the instructional guys, the it is literally full of, and this isn't a sales pitch, I only try to teach things on there that I know that people have battle tested proven, meaning that they've gone out, they've put time in and they can do it and they've done it in competition against other elite competitors. I'm not yep. talking about just being able to do this. Uh, no, I, I you know, fully agree. Yeah, so. I mean, in my opinion, like sales pitch is when you don't have the results, you know, like, right. but for example, we are just like two weeks. This, this today is pretty much like two weeks after the ADCC trials. Yeah. And Jacob Couch did seven matches and got seven submissions. Yeah. And he's very student from yeah, he, white to black belt, right? Yeah, so. he's, he, he came in the, in the middle of the belts, yeah. But he's, uh, yep. yeah, he's he's done incredible, man. Uh, we, we got a hold of him at Purple and we knocked out Pans, World Championships, multiple. Yeah, no, it's super impressive. He's, so, so, yeah. No, 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 this is not a safe speech. Don't worry about it. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's great, though. But I'm really happy to get to show this stuff. I've worked on all of this stuff for uh, next month. I've been training for 30 years. Man, that's incredible. So, oh, now, look, incredible. the first 10 years are me training in the grass with my brother. And even though you wouldn't think, this is when you really learn uh, how to make situations work for you. It's like uh, kids. Kids are really interesting because they decide what it is that they want and they will do anything to get what they want. We lose that as we get older. For me, jujitsu has always been like that. I yep. maybe at the time didn't have anyone showing me, but I figured out ways yep. to make that happen. And uh, so some of the stuff is a little different. It's maybe a little unorthodox or, you know, things that other people aren't doing. But like we said, it's uh, we've had a lot of success with it. And on top of it, it's just easy to remember, easy to apply and easy to teach. And those are the three most oh, important things to me. Yeah. And on top of that, I think I'm Brazilian, so I can say that. Like, uh, I think the sport is still dominated by, it's like the last world championship. I think every single division who won was, uh, was Brazilians. And uh, Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that uh, there are not too many coaches that are not Brazilians that are doing so well. And I think you were breaking that line. John yeah. definitely broke the, the, yeah. the paradigm like crazy. And the, you were also doing the same thing. So it's, and the, 
I think like it's so cool to see Jiu Jitsu going international, you know, like, so for example, just today in the next studio, uh, Fionn Davis is still, she's from Wales in UK. Right. And then last week, Ash Williams was here, who is also yeah. from Wales. Right. I had to go to the map to see where was right. Wales. So 20 years ago, this didn't exist yeah. in Jiu Jitsu. No. It was literally like just Brazil, 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 Brazil. Yeah. So even though I'm Brazilian, I find it very cool that Jiu Jitsu is, yeah. you know, like, and you're part of that as a coach. You know? In the end, Jiu Jitsu is still a baby, meaning it's really only been a uh, mainstream sport for we'll say 15 years, yep. you know, and as that, it, and it is, it's still to this day for sure. In the D dominated 100% by the young Brazilian competitors. I think I saw a breakdown to where I believe it was like 90% uh, of the medals, not first place, but the medals was at the still, adult male yeah. worlds was. Yeah, uh, from and then you see like even the no gears training so much nowadays. I think that that's also one of the reasons because it's more international than like there are people from all over the for world sure. succeeding and winning. So it's cool to see that you are doing that and with the gi as well. Yeah. Only, so. and one, one thing too is, uh, and, and I really mean this, uh, you know, I started my career from uh, uh, learning from instructionals and uh, BGJ Fanatics is one of the reasons that you have people coming from Wales learning and doing stuff. Before, yep. 20 years ago, unless someone was teaching you, there you couldn't get on YouTube, you yep. couldn't buy no, Fanatics yeah. videos, yeah. you know? No, nowadays even myself, I, I catch myself on BGJ Fanatics sometimes before some class. For example, yeah. I'm not so deep on heel hooks, right? So every now and then when I go to my school and I go teach heel hooks, I go to BGJ Fanatics yeah. first and I make sure that I'm teaching the right thing, you know? Like. Yeah. It's one of the most amazing yeah. things and it's grown and evolved the sport yeah. in a way that, like you said, you know, it's uh, we recently went over to Grapple Fest and we were in Africa and there were, yeah. there were great competitors over there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and some of the, there's no black belts. What, the, the coach is a blue belt. Yep. but he's able to purchase these videos. And that was one of the things that made me want to do a curriculum, yep. was people like me coming up, until I met Rodrigo Vaghi, I, we, we didn't have a curriculum. And yep. I just thought, man, a lot of these guys aren't black belts, and you feel a little insecure, you know, you think, man, I have yeah. to have yeah, a black belt. You don't belt. have a path, right? Right, like, uh, and yeah. this is one of those things that actually gives them a, you don't have to ask questions. Here it is, it's laid out for you. Like a roadmap. Map. And that's it, and yeah. one, once, you have that and you feel more secure about your training and your partners and pushing them you know people think you have to be a black belt to teach something and it's just not true you know there's I agree. amazing people I fully agree. And, I fully uh, agree. you know a group of three or four guys or girls that want to work hard together they can buy a fanatics video they can train that together and they yep. can become Craig no, jones I, and lachlan and these guys i fully agree know? anywhere around the world and you just have to put the effort and uh, no i i agree one million percent but uh, anyways, so guys, this is part of the uh, Blue Belt First Stripe curriculum from Heath Paddock. And uh, he's shooting everything this week. And maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check it out. And I hope you guys enjoyed and start using this move as soon as possible. Thank you, Heath. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.